Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is Steve Suffoletto from Erie Community College, south of Buffalo, New York. Today's conversation is going to be about rollers. Ink's final destination is the paper or the substrate. But before that, it needs to first be metered and then distributed from the fountain to the plate. Now, in lithography, the metering occurs at both local and global levels. The local level would be the blade and the keys, and the global level would be the sweep and the stroke. The distribution occurs through the path of the roller train. The inking, metering, and distribution system will depend on the type of printing process technology. Fluid or liquid inks, like in gravure and flexography, can't transfer with smooth rollers because the ink will just flow and spill off. However, thick paste inks, like in lithography and relief, they can transfer with smooth rollers because the ink will stick. Lithography is unique and special in that the image carrier of the plate is flat. So image and non-image errors are differentiated and kept separate by chemistry. Ink will not stick to a wet surface, so the background non-image area repels ink by keeping it wet, moist, or damp, hence the term dampening. The dampening system in lithography may be independent or separate, segregated, or part of integrated with the inking system. Now, when we get into the lab, we're going to do an exercise. You're going to fill out a table worksheet that has a diagram on it. So you're going to remove all the rollers from the Ryobi 2800. You're going to identify the roller by its name, its composition, whether it's hard or soft, its size measured in diameter, what type of movement it has, whether it's an oscillator or a ductor, and then you're going to put all these rollers back into the press again. So we'll use a caliper to measure the diameter. Now on YouTube, I have a separate video on the roller diagram. So this is the video on YouTube. It's 9 minutes and 30 minutes, and it discusses all the rollers in the Ryobi 2800. And this is the table that you'll be filling out in the lab. Again, it identifies the name of the roller, its composition, and its diameter and circumference. Metering determines the amount of ink at a specific location. So metering occurs at the ink fountain, the supplier, the source, with the ball, the blade, the keys, and the sweep. Metering at the local areas is done by the blade keys. So you could have a maximum high and a minimum low. And when you subtract those two, you get a range or a difference. So in terms of color variation or density variation, one of those keys or areas, locations could be dark and another different location could be light. So ink metering that is local is done by the keys. So the location is specific across the fountain, the width, and that's called spatial. The adjustment is done by screws, which are keys, zones, or slides. And on most printing presses, that distance is about 1.25 inches. Now on the Ryobi, it's 3 quarters of an inch or 0.75 inches. So you adjust the metering width and by a gap distance between the ball roller and the blade. So if you turn the key inward clockwise, it'll be less of a gap it'll close up, you'll get less ink, and the color will be lighter. If you turn the screw outward, counterclockwise, it'll be more of a gap, you'll open it up, you'll get more ink, and you'll be darker. So the old saying is righty tidy, lefty loosey when it comes to adjusting screws. And of course, the keys are set according to the plate area coverage. Now in the old days, we used to do this visually, but with technology, we now have SIP four, which is the collaborative interface between pre-press, press, post-press, and processes, where we actually, out of pre-press, we create a file that will preset the ink keys on the printing press. So if you look at this illustration right here, there's less plate coverage here, less ink coverage here, so you would have to close the keys. Over here to the right, there's more plate coverage, more ink coverage, so you'd have to open up the keys to get these densities to be the same and uniform and even. Here's a photograph of the ink fountain blade with the keys from the Ryobi 2800. So the fountain is the starting source for both the inking and the dampening. The starting source for both the inking and the dampening is called the fountain. Sometimes people also would call it a reservoir. It holds a supply of the ink or the water. The water is actually a fountain solution. So in this photograph here, this is the blade. It's a single piece of metal. 
modern presses are split fountain like piano keys. And here is these adjusting screws where if you turn the screw in clockwise, it'll push the blade up against the ball roller, giving you less ink. And if you turn the key counterclockwise left, you'll increase the gap here and giving yourself more ink film thickness. Now let's talk about the second type of ink metering, which is global, which is done by the sweep. So global is an overall or an average is kind of like a macro instead of a micro. And we call this the sweep or the stroke. So the sweep or the stroke adjusts the time or the distance, which is the dwell, that the ball and the ductor are in contact with each other. So a good analogy here is to think about a broom. So think of that broom sweep. The stroke can be short or it can be long. Short stroke would give you less ink. A long stroke would give you more ink. And on the Ryobi 2800, we also have a ductor on the dampener, and this will determine your ink water balance. If you have too much water, you'll flood out and you'll wash out. But if you have too little water and your plate becomes dry, it'll start to get dirty. So we have this phenomenon called dry up, catch up, tinting, toning, or scumming. So the ink water balance is very critical. It's very delicate. It takes time to learn with experience. So the inking is based on supply and demand. The inking system attempts to provide adequate supply of ink to the demand of the plate image area coverage. Now in flexography, gravure, and screen printing, this can be accomplished and achieved. But in lithography, this may not be the case and the print quality defects may appear that show uneven, non-uniform inking. So when there's demand, takeoff is greater than the supply, the charge, then there's going to be a shortage. And that shortage is called starvation, ghosting, re-rolling, or may show up as streaks. Now that we have the ink metered, we now have to distribute it. So distribution transfers the ink from the metering to the plate with the ink train rollers. The distribution makes the ink film thickness, or IFT, become even and uniform. Now, every time that the ink transfers from a roller to a roller, it splits in half. 50% stays and 50% transfers. So the distribution rollers will be the ductor roller, which is the first roller in the ink train, and then the form roller, which is the last roller in the ink train. Now, paste inks don't travel by gravity. They travel by ink film thickness and tack from thicker to thinner. And there's a technical specification, ISO 2846, that says the ink should be formulated so that its proper ink film thickness is one micron. For offset lithography, the inking and the dampening systems consist of a series of connected rollers, and we call this the ink train. So just like a locomotive or a train has independent cars connected together, the ink train will have rollers connected together. These rollers carry and transfer a thin film of ink and dampening solution to the plate. The connected rollers alternate between soft, a rubber, and hard, either a metal or in plastic composition, to ensure that we can uniformly set the pressure evenly for contact of transfer. Generally, the more rollers you have in your ink train, the better the final print quality will be. Now, one of the rollers in the roller train is called the ductor, and a ductor has a motion that is intermittent. It means that it alternates between making contact on touching and then separating away off, not touching. The ductor carries the ink or the water from the metering to the distribution. Now, modern dampeners are continuous. They don't duct anymore. So a Dahlgren system or a compact or a crest line are all examples of continuous dampening. Another roller inside the ink train would be called a vibrator roller, often called an oscillating roller. This roller will move laterally across its shaft from left to right. The vibrator or the oscillator helps minimize ghosting, re-rolling, and starvation. It's trying to evenly distribute the ink across the roller. Now, one recommendation I have with you on the 2800s is don't idle the press. What I mean by that is stop the press between adjustments. So if you have to make a ink adjustment or a register adjustment, stop the press, don't idle. And that's because you want to preserve your most recent, latest adjustments to the ink water balance. The other reason why you don't want to idle the press is because while the press is idling, all the adjustments are manual. So you're still over inking because you didn't turn the ink ductor off. 
and you're you're over dampening because you didn't turn the water ductor off. So the consequence is you're upsetting your ink water balance. Okay, so here's a short video clip showing you the movement of these rollers. You can see the ductor going back and forth, on and off. You can see the oscillator going left to right, side to side. And we can see the ink sweep fall lower from the stroke. And finally, the last roller in the ink train is called the form roller. Any roller that contacts or touches the plate is called a form roller. Again, the more ink form rollers you have, the better the print quality. Now, the Ryobi 2800 only has two ink form rollers. But the Ryobi 3302 has three ink form rollers and a dampening form roller. Ink forms will have different sizes to give you better print quality. Now the shape of a roller is a cylinder, but if you take a cross section of it, that cylinder becomes a circle. So we know a circle has a diameter, which is the total cross width. The diameter is twice or two times the radius. And the radius is a vector or a line that goes from the very center to the outer edge. So the radius is the diameter divided by two. If you want to know the total distance around the circle, the outer peripheral, the perimeter, uh, the wraparound or the repeat length, the circumference is pi times 2r or pi times d, where pi is a constant of 3.14. So let's show you these distances. This is the radius. This is the diameter, which is twice the radius. And this is the circumference. And the circumference is pi times radius times 2, or pi times diameter. And once again, pi is 3.14127. So let's see what happens when we take a roller and we roll it out for several revolutions. So that's the first revolution. There is the second revolution. And here's the third revolution. And there's the fourth revolution. Notice that if you don't replenish the ink that's coming off that roller, there will be less ink on the roller for every revolution. So there's a demand here that we have to supply. Now if I take the roller, recharge it with ink, resupply it with ink, and then do the same thing over again, I just exaggerate the streaks because they're still aligned. But if I take those rollers and I now stagger them, you kind of hide where the repeats are. The problem is on a printing press, the rollers always start and stop at the same position at the gap, the lead edge. So we have to find a way of staggering the rollers. And we can do that by changing their size, by changing their diameter. An important maintenance step we have to do is set roller pressure. So we set the pressure by checking the nip stripe. So the width of that contact surface area is typically on a small duplicator going to be about three millimeters. That shape should be even uniform and parallel and to the right here is a transparent ruler plastic ruler from botcher a roller manufacturer that shows you the width of the stripes in millimeters now some rollers are just driven by friction their own weight and gravity other rollers may be spring loaded for pressure and then still some rollers will have a me mechanical eccentric cam to set their pressure so here's an example of a roller stripe of the ink form against the plate Again, depending on the size of the cylinders and the rollers, it might be somewhere between three, four, or five millimeters. We don't want to be too thin or too light, not enough pressure. And we certainly don't want to be too thick or too heavy, too much pressure. That can cause many problems. We don't want the roller pressure to be uneven from side to side. And we don't want it to have a deformed, distorted shape like a convex crown or a concave which shows you that you have swollen ends. So the roller shape should be nearly a perfect circle. We can measure the circularity, and that's called roundness. So total indicated runout, or TIR, is a measure of circularity or roundness, and it's often used in geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, or GDT. Now, if the radius is the same for any and all angles, then you know you are round and concentric. If you're out, out of center, then it's eccentric, 
kind of like a cam. So again, some distorted or deformed shapes would be concave and convex, which is crowned. We mentioned this earlier. I just want to repeat some common print quality defects we can get with rollers and inking would be starvation, ghosting, re-rolling, and streaks. So if we have different size form rollers and we use oscillators and anti-ghost form rollers, ghost busting rollers, we should be able to minimize these defects. Now the streaks be, can be coming from the inking system or they can be coming from the dampener or it might happen at the plate gaps or it might be happening from a ductor shock or the rollers might be set too hard and heavy to the plate so that they bounce in the gap and bounce back out of the gap. So here's an example of ghosting starvation. These plate forms are challenging because when I print them, where there's less ink coverage, you get darker bands. Where there's more ink coverage, you get lighter bands. So you could try to fix this by adjusting your ink keys locally, but it's not typically going to work. Again, this is the purpose of the oscillating and vibrating rollers to help minimize these defects. Some roller manufacturers, some of these are national, some are regional, would be people like Acorn, Pomarco, which used to be American, Botcher, Diamond, Rollum, and Rotodyne. In summary, rollers are an important major component to the inking and dampening system. Their age and their condition, how well you clean them and how much maintenance you do to them, affect their print quality, the productivity, and the waste that they generate. As usual, thank you very much. I appreciate your attendance and participation. And hopefully you found this content interesting, informative, and relevant. And please provide feedback for continuous improvement. Have a good day, people.